India's market news headquarters. Cutting edge analysis. Influential insights. Market moving intelligence. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios. It's a Thursday morning. Markets, of course, yesterday doing very well, taking out the earlier highs, making a new high. This morning, the mood is a bit more somber, and uh, that is, I think, uh, thanks or no thanks to NVIDIA, which will be a big talking point. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleague Survi and Nigel. Guys, hi, morning. Hi. Uh, good morning, guys. Morning. I guess when I was looking at uh, the NVIDIA print, the question that comes to mind is, how much is enough? And, you know, whether too much is enough or not. And I think that's what Wall Street was grappling with for the better part of last evening. The numbers came in after hours, but yeah. I think uh, there was a bit of a sell-off that was underway anyway. Absolutely. And yesterday we went ahead and hit all that fresh all-time highs. A bit of an anticlimax for the time we uh, did finish up because the markets, well, <laughs> they were not really charging ahead. But the uptrend is intact. I think we have tech to focus on today and second half of trade, Reliance AGM. Mm -hmm. Nigel, we could have uh, avoided any kind of pressure today if you had worn that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> but guess who's got the green going today? Yeah. So, you know, it's the left side lifting things up. So, we'll, we'll see if Prashant is a lucky charm this we'll time see. around. We'll see. But, uh, you know, at least I think... Uh, so, I will, let's just sort of uh, tell you what you need to know as we begin a new session. And NVIDIA will be the talking point. Is the talking point across most of Asia? Not, I mean, so much here because we don't have sort of, you know, supply chains and companies supplying to NVIDIA or sort of chip manufacturers or fab guys. I mean, it's more the story in other Asian markets. But in any case, it's a big stock. It's at the center of the global AI theme. And uh, after hours, I mean, it reported after New York markets closed, uh, and the stock was down 7% uh, then. I mean, actually, going into earnings, NVIDIA was down about 2.5% regular trading. Uh, so second quarter was a mild beat. It was not a big beat, it was a mild beat. But third quarter guidance was below, uh, you know, what I would call very elevated, very, very highly optimistic, rosy expectations. And it was not a big uh, miss or anything of that sort. I think on the revenue front, about a billion dollar uh, miss. Uh, and uh, in terms of margins, about 50-odd uh, basis point miss. So there, there were two sets of points which they put out as far as third quarter guidance is concerned. So this could be, I mean, the disappointment of the NVIDIA that you're seeing out there uh, could just be a little bit of uh, sort of, you know, profit booking and, uh, and, and, and just that. I mean, nothing major in that sense. It's not a shakeout. Uh, so the founder of NVIDIA gave an interview post, uh, so the results, et cetera. He said, and, I, and I'm quoting, he said, well, we're going to sell billions and billions of dollars of the Blackwell chip, which is a new chip uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, so, uh, there's enough there. Uh, I think it's just like a one-day kind of reaction. U.S. equities, it, you know, the action in the U.S. markets preceded the NVIDIA results. Uh, so, you've got to sort of look at that in uh, that context. S&P was down 0.6. NASDAQ was down about 1.14. But this is all of this is without the NVIDIA numbers. Dollar index, and I was sort of pointing that, this out yesterday, uh, that's sort of creeping back up. It, there's nothing real catalyst for the up move, about 0.4, 0.5% up. Uh, but maybe just sort of stretched positioning more than anything else. So there's a bit of a lift on the dollar. We're back at about 101. Oil prices, they've been bouncing around, I mean, up 2%, down 3%. So last night, uh, we are down about 1% on oil. Uh, so which basically gets us back to our own structure and our own markets. Uh, now, the Nifty, of course, has taken out the last high. We left off at 25.52. Uh, so we are, there are two levels, right, on the upside. One is the Fibonacci retracement, which is 25,530, level we put out last I think five or six days, but before that, before this 530 level, 25 530 level, there's a daily upper Bullinger band which stands at 25 279. Uh, so those are the two numbers uh, between here uh, that, that the market perhaps uh, can look forward to. Support comes in at the uh, sort of hourly average in the 20 day. So 24 920 is the hourly, and the 24 571 number is the 20 day moving average. On the downside, structure for the Nifty Bank, it's I mean the Nifty Bank ended slightly lower yesterday. It's not very clear. And I mean, you know, the price charts are also not very clean. Supports, I'll start with supports here. That comes in at the swing low of 50,856. Again, here we're not very far away from those supports. And the daily upper Bollinger Band is shifted to about 51,797. You need a clean, sustained kind of breakout here, which has been missing for quite a while. Now, Gift Nifty, I think, is indicating a slightly subdued start, uh, about 3840 odd points. I mean, 
you know, the the Nifty has been up for 10 days, 10 straight days. The market has been has been closing in the green. It's not as if it's uh, 10 days and, you know, it's not a big gain. It's been slow and steady. Uh, but uh, we've been up for about uh, 10 straight, uh, 10 straight uh, uh, trading sessions. Today, you've got the Reliance AGM as well. The, and the only thing which I think markets will uh, watch out for from that AGM, of course, is, uh, you know, the uh, listing uh, for Geo. And I think uh, will we hear something in terms of timelines, etc.? We'll see. Uh, so that's the clock uh, counting down to the RIL AGM speech, which I think will be relevant for markets in the second half, of course. Surbhi. Um, absolutely. And that's a big event to watch out for. But uh, just for a minute to go back to the point that you made on NVIDIA, I mean, I, I guess this is classic bull market stuff, right? Yeah. Lofty expectations and there is delivery, but you still want more. So just for the record, I want to put the number. So we know what we're talking about, this massive, massive chip giant. Absolutely nothing wrong with the numbers. 122% up on the revenue. That's the quarterly revenue. Guidance of building on it in the next quarter. The guidance is $32.5 billion. The street whisper numbers apparently were $34, $35 billion. Uh, the buyback program is gigantic, $50 billion in buyback. That's what NVIDIA announced, so no misses there. Then people started, you know, sort of uh, quibbing about uh, the gross margin and whether that's kind of declining. But what's the gross margin we're talking about? 75%, that's the gross margin that NVIDIA is making. So just wanted to put the numbers up uh, for awareness that, you know, this is the extent of this juggernaut. But anyway, the street wants more given the stock price appreciation. So Asian markets are still kind of... Reeling under that impact, there's still a fair amount of red across Asian screens. Some of the semiconductor stocks, uh, Taiwan, for instance, is down, and some of the other stocks as well in the supply chain across the region, they have been uh, under some pressure. NASDAQ futures, let's go back and check that, because last time I saw them, it's still down uh, about a percent, despite the 1% the decline, you know, preempting the uh, NVIDIA story. So still down about a percent on NASDAQ futures and also about half a percent on the S&P 500 futures. So let's see. Uh, the global situation is a little cautious. The good news is that oil is giving us comfort because it continues to climb down and yields are steady. Now, on the RIL AGM, like Prashant mentioned, I mean, the first watch point, of course, is going to be, is there going to be any indication of a demerger of a, or a listing of the different businesses, whether it's geo or the retail businesses, business? That's going to get the market extremely excited. The other big headline came in yesterday. The Competition Commission of India clearance for the Viacom Disney merger finally came through. Great timing just ahead of the AGM. So we will, of course, get more commentary on the contours of the media business uh, that uh, Reliance is building, the largest, obviously, business in uh, the country, media and entertainment. Uh, apart from that, perhaps any more announcements on any strategic alliances or maybe even sort of, uh, you know, strategic M&A on the O2C business. That's what is going to be a watch point. And then let's not forget, uh, obviously, the new energy vertical where all the gigafactories are coming up in Jamnagar and, you know, the electrolyzers, the entire hydrogen project. So the market will want perhaps some more timelines in terms of uh, bringing them to fruition and uh, sort of the go-to market uh, time estimates for the new energy vertical. So that's what we'll watch out for. Aside of Reliance, one more interesting corporate development. Interglobe, watch out for this stock because our colleagues are telling us that there could be a block trade today. Nimesh is keeping a tab on this. Sudarshan's keeping a tab on it as well. Uh, and perhaps Rakesh Gangwal could be selling a little more of his stake. Not all of it. You know, another tranche could be coming through. So we'll watch out for this. Fund flows, just to put them on the, on the table. FIIs were sellers, as usual. I mean, 1,300 crores of sell coming in. Yesterday's domestic institutional buying was a little on the lower side, just about 439 crores. That was an interesting departure from the norm. We'll watch whether this is a trend or just a, a one-off. Finally, uh, yesterday, just as we were closing out, SEBI came out with its warning. Uh, saying that be aware of SME companies and SME IPOs and very, very stringent language being used there. But it's a warning right now. It's not regulatory action. But the warning called it out, saying there is a modus operandi followed by some promoters. Announcements are followed up with corporate actions like bonus issues, splits and preferential allotments. We urge investors to be careful and watchful. But are investors listening? We'll find out. Nigel, so how are you reading the overall setup? Just one word on NVIDIA. You put mm -hmm. those numbers very nicely on the table. Uh, you know, the stock has done nothing for the last two and a half months. Mm -hmm. The stock is down 10% from uh, the recent peak, in fact. It's yeah. a high of around $140. It's down to around $125. Yeah. So if my gut is correct, tomorrow when we wake up and we come on the show, it mm. won't be down 7%. Let's see how that, <laughs> let's see how that goes. Well, let's uh, focus on the top cues that we're looking at. Today will be the nifty expiry that we're looking at. So that's point uh, number one. The second fact will be NVIDIA's numbers, NASDAQ, both of them a little bit subdued. So we'll have the tech index that could start off a little bit on the weakest side. 
the large tech has seeded very, very well and select mid-cap companies as well. So we'll have to see whether or not we see some bit of a pullback on the tech names. And point number three will be obviously the Reliance AGM. Second half of the trading session will belong to that big boy Reliance Industries. Let's tell you about positioning there. In yesterday's trading session, the FIs, well, they added 35,000 long contracts and they covered some shorts as well, which takes long positioning now to around 62%. I, for one, don't like too many longs in the system, particularly from the FIs, because when there are shorts, you can have some bit of a cushion. And post this move, we are seeing that the long positioning has gone to more than 1.3 lakh contracts hard. I like a market that has some shots. Normally, in fact, you know, when you see this uh, moving up, the markets find it a little bit difficult to move up. And guess what? The client positioning from being net long by 50,000 contracts in the last few sessions, well, now, in fact, uh, you know, they're actually net short. The client positioning is actually a negative 47,000 contracts. And normally, the clients have been getting it right. So the clients note that this is a net short position of around 47,000 contracts. What about the options data? Well, you have the 25,100 call that was fairly active in yesterday's trading session. Premium at around 35 rupees. You know, so that's writing that we're seeing out there. And we have some writing even at the 25,000 put. Both these two strikes expire today. So let's get the numbers going then. Once you punch in these numbers, well, you'll uh, uh, have the data points up for you on the screen. Support going by the options data. Is that around the 24,950? Yesterday's low was closer to these levels, so that's important. And yesterday's high was closer to these levels. And the options data as well is suggesting that. So those are the goalposts for today's trading session. But as I've been saying the last few days, for a bigger move on the Nifty, well, you'll have to have the Nifty Bank break out of the range. On the downside, it's protecting the 20 DMA. But as we saw yesterday as well, it went up to around the 51,400 odd mark, but it couldn't get past that. So we'll have to break out of this range to give the Nifty further direction from here all. It's an exciting trading session. We'll keep an eye out on how the Nifty expiry goes, how the tech names react to the overnight queues, and will the Nifty Bank be the swing factor for the day? All right.